What up friends, Leron here and today we're looking at my new Schmincke tubes. What up friends, Leron here. As I mentioned, today we're looking at my new Schmincke tubes. Schmincke sent me these and they are fantastic. I have quite a few colors here. We have the Turner's yellow. We have the Perlin Green, we have the Perlin Dark Red, we have the Quinacridone Violet, we have the Cobalt Blue, and finally we have the French Ultramarine, okay? Now what I want to do is make it a little interesting, so we're gonna kind of swatch them, take a look at each and every one of them, but we're gonna do that using painting. I'm just gonna do a few mini paintings for you and kind of show you first off how each one of them looks and then how they look maybe glazed upon one another. Okay, so I want to make this a fun sort of review video. Um, I am really highly enjoying them. I use them mostly for my own location work. Um, so this is just paints I grew to really love. Starting to go beyond Daniel Smith, I think, uh, because I've been using these so extensively recently. Okay, and they're just super vibrant and soft and fun to use. So let's change the angle and get started. So let's go over the tubes I want to share with you today and this is really interesting. I actually have personal interest in each and every one of them because uh, they just look fantastic. So we have uh, Turner's Yellow here. Uh, we have Perlin Green which uh, some of you remember uh, I was really really curious about. Just a fantastic grayish green. Um, we have here uh, French Ultramarine and I only experimented and painted actually more than experimentation with their uh, ultramarine finest and this is the French one uh, French ultramarine so I'm very curious about that we have the quinacridone uh, violet so with the schminka I've been using the uh, magenta as a parallel to Daniel Smith's uh, quinacridone rose so here we have something that may be more similar to that I'm really curious just to see uh, what this looks like uh, we have here uh, Perlin Dark Red, which I'm very curious about as well. I'm familiar with Perlin Red um, from Daniel Smith, but this one will probably be a little different, if not significantly different. And we have here Cobalt Blue. Now, Cobalt Blue is a rather standard paint, I guess, but for me personally, I almost never used it and so um, and I know a lot of people use it extensively I know it's a bit of a more expensive paint too I just never got the chance to really try it out and I think it will work uh, really well as a even as a possible try it with the Turner yellow and uh, the Peril in dark red or instead with a quinacridone violet so this could be an interesting uh, trial to sort of try out and see um, how it works out these are all kind of expensive you see series 2 series 3 and series 4 uh, it's a bit hard to see, but it's the number uh, inside the circle. Um, okay, so anyway, let me prepare some stuff here, and we're gonna just take a look at all of these, uh, all of these different paints, kind of play around with them. It's the first time I use them as well, so I want to make it very uh, fun and sort of easygoing uh, for me and you. Okay, so uh, let's get these uh, this area ready and get started. Okay, so instead of just uh, painting boring swatches, I decided to just have a few. Uh, fruits and vegetables going around here and just trying to paint them now I am gonna put some paint here on the palette uh, I don't need a huge amount of it so just a little from every tube should be sufficient trying to do it as cleanly as possible and um, yeah so I'm probably gonna get my hands a little dirty from the paint but that's fine that happens uh, with new paints so anyway uh, sometimes the paint uh, comes out of the tube in a way you wouldn't have expected it to. Uh, it happens very often actually. So here you can see some yellow already. Um, and I'm just gonna uh, go with it and kind of uh, use uh, each paint just for a different fruit and see what we get. Um, so let me prepare all the things here and time lapse and I'll be back and we'll get started. Okay friends, so let's get started. I'll be using my small silver uh, black velvet brush, size 8. And I'm gonna start with the Turner's yellow here. Um, and this is really gonna be a surprise for me too. I don't really know how these behave. Uh, all I can tell you is that I noticed the difference of them coming out of the tube. 
um, and they really came out differently. Some of them really poured outside, like the French Ultramarine, which I'm really used to uh, French Ultramarine doing that kind of thing. Uh, while other, others were a little more uh, dry, kind of, from the get-go. Uh, set there a little more t tightly weighted to be squeezed out, um, unlike uh, some others. So anyway, yeah, this is the Turner's Yellow, and I love it. You know, I love these kinds of yellows. Uh, I think what I can immediately notice is, and I don't really like, by the way, the palette I'm using, but that's fine. Uh, what I immediately notice is that this yellow is one of the most kind of primary, maybe uh, even yellows. It's not too hot, not too warm, not too cool, uh, which is interesting. I didn't know, I was expecting a, a bit of a hotter, warmer kind of uh, redder yellow and this one's really neutral it's it's in the center which I like um, it's a nice uh, a nice thing it, it makes me believe even more that there could be some kind of a primary triad here that I can use uh, as a primary mainly uh, so next up we have the blueberries here we're gonna use the cobalt blue this one came really hard out of the tube it was just um, uh, really sort of like a block and um, I'm gonna use it to paint these blueberries here and this is why I don't like the palette it seems like the paint doesn't flow uh, as nicely as I'd want on it um, but anyway yeah first I'm using cobalt blue Woo, celebration so I'm gonna just paint and leave maybe a, a bit highlights I'm really improvising I'm not looking at any reference um, I just want it to be a little quick fun uh, painting process here uh, I'm not worrying too much so uh, yeah just leaving some gaps for maybe uh, light later on. I'm gonna put in some shadows as well. Let's pick up a little bit of uh, more of the pigment. And uh, yeah, uh, the Perlin uh, green, funny enough, was really dry when it came out of the tube. Uh, so that was uh, an interesting experience. Uh, never had a paint be so dry. It almost looked as if it was um, kind of opened and, and someone played around with it. Uh, but it doesn't matter, they just, uh, Schmincke sent them to me, so uh, I can't really complain. Um, now we have uh, the bell pepper. What I'm gonna do is maybe go over all of them later on and just add some uh, shading or shadows. Um, but anyway, yeah, this looks really like a good, even primary sort of uh, combination. Really surprised me. Um, I, I had a feeling it may be the case, uh, but I tried not to expect too much. Um, now, as with all Perlins, this one is also has kind of a um, dim feeling to it. Just my experience with the Perlins, uh, they're not as bright. Um, except for the Daniel Smith Perlin Red, which is relatively bright. By the way, it's really nice to paint out uh, inside once in a while. I've been I've been really focused on outside. Um, and it just, you can already see the way I hold the brush is different because uh, I'm so used to holding it more at the back, just more far at the back and, and trying to be really loose. And, um, and now I'm just sort of continuing with that, uh, with that behavior, just uh, naturally it feels like the right thing to do. Uh, even though I, I am painting rather small shapes, uh, it feels like the right way to hold it. Um, so anyway, yeah, and you can see you can already get an interesting uh, initial wash like that. So next up we have the pear, and uh, I'm gonna have to be a little original with my space here. Uh, I had a feeling it's not, I didn't leave enough room for all of the paints. But as you can see, the Perlin uh, green is really, really dim uh, and interesting. I know it's not like, it's probably not the perfect uh, paint to use for a pear, uh, but I decided to use it anyway. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna start here with the left. Uh, a bit dark, like this, and as I move it kind of to the right, I'll try and, and sort of blend it in uh, to the right, just with a bit of a moist brush like that. Uh, so I do want to have a strong highlight here, but uh, but not white, okay, not not entirely white. And you can see how this green uh, works for this for this uh, fruit. It doesn't look uh, weird, I think, even though pears usually have a brighter green. Um, I like the way it looks. And this Perlin green is just fantastic looking. I really love this one. Um, yeah, so I'm happy to have actually a tube of it to play around with. 
Um, so this is it for the pear. Now next we have the apple and for that I'm going to use uh, the French ultramarine. Some of you may wonder why am I using a French ultramarine for an apple. Well it's a, a genetically uh, modified apple and so it is uh, literally uh, blue. Or, or uh, in other words, I just couldn't find another blue fruit or vegetable to use. Uh, and so I decided to use an apple. And uh, to just say it's a genetically modified one. So I hope you'll forgive me uh, for that. <laughs> I'm going to leave here this uh, small highlight. And I will just make sure to blend some of it in so that it's not too harsh like that uh, with the edge. And then I want to add a bit of darkness here to the bottom just a little bit more of it uh, also um, there should be a bit of shadow here kind of in the inner side of that uh, of that shape and at the bottom we have this shadow that I didn't put in but I'm gonna put it in now as you can see just a few simple shapes and really give this uh, definition one thing I need to do now is lift because I kind of went over the stem and I want to leave it clear, so here we go. Simple, simple, simple. It's funny because just now I realize how much painting outside really uh, helps my skills. Um, so just an interesting insight because I just feel much more confident with these kinds of things. So anyway, now let's take some of the um, quinacridone. What was it? The quinacridone. I forgot the name. Quinacridone violets. Yes. And we have some uh, figs here. And I'm going to go a bit wild with this last one. Put in some water in there. Sort of pull that through here. And then maybe go a little darker because this fig is sort of cut open and this one is closed. So this part should essentially be white or almost white uh, due to the light. But I'm just going to wing it a bit and... Uh, just create some interesting shapes and shadows here, uh, not worrying too much about it being perfect. And then we can come back with some darker uh, shadows and, and get this sort of finalized. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just give it a few moments to dry. And then I'm going to come back and try and find a color that will be complementary to shade with. Okay, I may use the same one for a few of them. I may use a different one in each one, um, but I'm just, I just want to play around with it and have fun. Okay. Okay, so now most of these are fairly dry and what I want to do is just um, shade them with another layer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and be a little wild here. Uh, so to shade the banana I'm going to use, uh, actually you can see this because I zoomed in, but I'm going to use the French Ultramarine um, just to give it a nice kind of complementary touch I guess. Um, maybe a little bit more watered down version of it and just see what it looks like. Okay, so this way we also get to kind of experiment with uh, different combinations or glazing. Um, and I can already tell that this was the right choice. As you can see, I think these two work really well together actually. Surprisingly well. Um, get some shadow going here. Probably should be a larger shadow, but that's not that important in this case. Um, now I don't necessarily want to blend this line too much because with the banana there is a sharp uh, sort of shift uh, in direction. What I can do is just to be partially <laughs> blending it in so I can just use this, soften this edge and leave this edge kind of uh, more, more even and um, more bold. Okay, so this is a nice, uh, this I think looks nice. Now we have the blueberries and I think with these I'm gonna actually shade them with the pearl in red, okay? Uh, to remind you, the pearl in red is this one. I think it will look good. Uh, these two definitely seem like they can create some nice grays, so this is what I wanna uh, maybe try out here. I think if I use the, the quinacridone violet it would look a little different. Uh, so already you can see how these sort of dim each other. And I'm just painting around the shadows here, like that. Um, and I'm gonna give some shading to the actual blueberries, like this. And here we have a sort of uh, inert shadow, I guess. Now here it's really important because it's such a round shape to blur all of this, to blend it all together. So I'm just wet my brush a bit and dry most of it on a paper towel 
and I'm going back and smoothing out all the edges, okay? So now you can see what this looks like. And it's so funny because I'm just now discovering kind of together with you the benefits of, um, of painting outside because what I'm doing right now is like peanuts uh, compared to, to the things uh, I have to deal with on a day-to-day on a -day basis when I'm working outside. Uh, this is so much more comfortable and I had a feeling this will happen and I knew that, that I kind of want to, um, to go back to doing some studio work uh, just because I think you always kind of alternate between uh, a few modes of work, I guess. And uh, you get a lot of benefits from, from the combination of them both, okay? So this is what I wanted to say. Now, I didn't work on the stem of the bell pepper, which is what we're gonna focus on now. I'm gonna use this opportunity to show you more of the palette because it's close to the bell pepper. And we're gonna zoom in a bit. So for the bell pepper, first I think let's work on the stem just a bit. We're gonna add some perlin green here. Like this. Keep it light, that's okay. Um, and now to shade this one, what shall we use? Actually, I'm not sure. It could be interesting to try and use the quinacridone violet or the um, French ultramarine maybe. Let's go with the French ultramarine. It's a bit of a warmer uh, blue. I think it will match the, the red quite nicely. Uh, so it's kind of similar to this one, only uh, a reverse kind of example. I'm gonna do something like this. And I'm really improvising here with the shapes. Um, I don't have... Uh, this uh, solid idea of what I'm gonna do. I'm just kind of doing and seeing what the result is. So let's go for it like this. And we can blend these edges again like we did before, like this, like so. And then you can see uh, what it looks like. This one should be blended as well. Um, not necessarily the best shape for bell pepper, uh, but I think it, it, it reads uh, like it should, so it's not such a big deal. I'm gonna use the same one just for some shadows here on the bottom. Uh, maybe here in the middle too. Something like this, just make this a little stronger. And uh, the shadow. And as long as it kind of reads like the object it is, uh, then that's fine. I think it lost a bit of its uh, vibrancy or a bit of its redness, uh, which is okay, you know. I still like it. It has a very... Um, unique look that's that's for sure um yeah because the highlight doesn't pop enough in these conditions so uh, that's fine next up we have the pier let me rearrange the camera so my immediate instinct tells me that for the pier we'll use the peril in red but let's not do that let's be a little original and use the quinacridone violet okay may not be necessarily the best match uh, but i still want to go for it okay and um and green and and Purple or violet can work together quite nicely, uh, believe it or not. So uh, I think it could work work out just fine. And, and already I think uh, this was the right uh, decision. I'm just going to use a bit more uh, watery consistency here to blend it once again. And now because I used some water, it's, it's more fluid and I can just go back, revisit some areas, add a bit more shade, ruin the shape a bit at the bottom. Uh, and all of those good stuff. So I'm just gonna put in a bit of a shadow on the stem, like this. And this one's good, we don't have to deal with it too much, it's kind of done, I think. Um, so now we get to the apple. Now the apple is interesting um, because it's blue. And we used red for the previous blue. Uh, I'm tempted to use again the quinacridone. Let's go for the perlin green, actually. Let's, let's work with the perlin green for this one. Uh, to shade it, so the same green as here. And we have this highlight here, uh, so we should have some shadow here. I'm gonna work at this one a little uh, slower. So I want to kind of blend that one in here. Make sure I leave uh, this sort of a highlight for the stem, I think. Uh, a bit more green here, let it spill a bit. Pick up some more of the paint and use it for the very bottom of the apple. Like this. And connect it with the shadow here at the bottom. And what we must do right now is blend that aggressive shadow right into the blue that was there before. And you can see how that's a pretty well-defined shape uh, of an apple. 
Maybe it's a bit too dark here, but that's fine. Uh, I want to go back actually into the shadow because now it looks fairly dark because the paint is wet. But I want to make it a little darker. Okay. Uh, I missed kind of talking simultaneously while painting. It allows me to do more things than uh, when I narrate. Uh, because when I narrate, you know, um, I, I don't have control over what I'm doing. I'm just looking at a process I'm already done with. Um, and in this example, I can actually stop and point at the thing I'm talking about. So I thought it would be a nice idea just to break off some of the edges here of the shadow uh, and add, give it a bit of a sort of, sort of broken, uh, blended look. And I like it. I like the way this turned out. Now, finally, we have the figs. And for the figs, what paint should we use? So basically, we have this combination already. Uh, in the pier, we have the uh, quinacridone violet and the perlin green. So for this one, I'd like to try something else. Maybe we can try out either the French ultramarine or the uh, cobalt blue. I think the French ultramarine will work a little better here. So we'll go with that because I did want to use it uh, in another combination, I think. So uh, I think this will be a good idea. So uh, now this part of the fig is really, really it's sort of cut open. So this whole areas are bright. So what I'm going to do is paint around them. Uh, the pier in the in the fig, sorry, in the background is closed up. It's not cut open and so it's significantly darker. So I'm just gonna negative paint around all of these shapes here. I'm gonna make this one stronger. It may lose uh, the paint, the, the, the color of the fig in the process, but that's fine because it will, will read well because of the rest of the shapes. Okay, so no worries about that. Gonna close off this shape as well. Now I don't want it to be too stark of a contrast. So what I will do, there are some details here. I have a feeling I'll mess it up, but uh, let's just try and get some of the details here. And then pick up some paint, sort of run these together like this. Just give it some kind of a um, an, an inside part, okay? Don't know exactly how well it will read. Uh, but it felt like it felt like the wrong idea to just leave it completely, you know. Um, and then I'm gonna pick up some more paint, add it to the shadow here, connect it with this shape on the right. There's a sharp edge between them here. We can throw in just a few touches of paint here and there. Uh, I think this edge is wants to be blended, so I will blend it. Um, now the one thing that's left is to differentiate the shadow from the actual figs. Uh, so this area here should be darker. This may uh, have required, in another example, a an, an additional wash. I'm just going to try and get it this in this one go. Uh, but definitely you can get another wash. But here my point is really to demonstrate uh, the different uh, colors to you, so it's okay. Uh, I do want to make these areas a little darker. And I want to blend that part in. Uh, so hopefully this creates a nice fig impression. Let me zoom out and show you all of the final results together. So here we have it, our nice fruits and vegetables. Here are the paints. Again, as a reminder, we have the Turner's Yellow Cobalt Blue Perlin uh, Red uh, Light, was it? Perlin Red, Perlin Dark Red, sorry, Perlin Dark Red, Perlin Green, French Ultramarine and Quinacridone Violet, okay? And these are, once again, the uh, tubes that Schmincke sent me, the Horadam. These are the new, uh, from the new line of paints, except maybe for the Cobalt Blue, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, but just fantastic, I love them. Uh, I, I use these mainly for my on-location work, not these specific ones, but the ones I have in my other palette uh, that most of you are familiar with already. Um, and this is, these are just tubes that I uh, like a lot. Um, and I will uh, do another video on the pens in the near future because I want to show you these ones uh, as well. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. Let me change the angle and we'll wrap up the video. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this review and demo. I had a lot of fun doing it. I think it's nice to not just swatch things out, but really uh, use the sort of a painting or mini painting to show that. Um, I'm highly pleased not just with the, the paints themselves, but also the way um, 
they kind of glaze on top of one another. I really like that. I think this this one, I'm sorry, this one is really surprised me uh, positively. I wasn't necessarily expecting the Quinacridone Violet and the Perlin Green to work this well, and they did. Also this one, also this one, I really like them. I just really like the way they look, uh, and they're pretty consistent with uh, with my experience with the ones I use mostly on my own location work, also from the Horadam series, just uh, different paints, the, the actual paints are a little different, it's the ones you saw already in the past videos. Um, so anyway, yeah, this is it, I hope you enjoyed this review, if you're looking to upgrade your current watercolor paints or maybe uh, just start out with something that's a little better, I definitely recommend to check these out. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you still haven't, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also follow me on Snapchat and Instagram where I share more daily updates, new things in my life, uh, paintings in process. I'm going a lot outside and just painting and if you want to see more of that and more of my city, um, so you, you can really enjoy that. And I will see you again in the next video.